Hi, everyone. I'm Scott Callan. Thank you so much for joining. Working off of the FY25-3, so the March 2025 fiscal year, first quarter corporate presentation that's right in front of us and also available on our website. Let me start before going into today's discussion uh, by expressing our sympathies to all those affected by the earthquake yesterday in Kyushu. Um, it was quite a shake. So 7.1 magnitude, uh, very disruptive. I, I do think we should probably also point out this is an example of how Japan is just extraordinarily capable of dealing with these kinds of natural disasters. A, a, a quake of that size, no deaths, six, only 16 injuries. Um, it, it's just, again, remarkable how strong Japan is in this area. Um, but it's, it, you know, it was disruptive. And, and we, we, we extend our, our heart helpful hopes for all, everybody in terms of the recovery process. All right, I'm going to turn to um, the, the Q1 overview. We did a lot this quarter. Um, rapid progress in our game-changing EV technologies. You know, we've invented uh, a more advanced form of OLED. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, later in the presentation day, we're on track for mass production in December this year. We had a robust OLED and automotive demand driving our sales growth, uh, particularly o OLED, which is very important to us. The world is switching over to OLED. Um, had 41% year-on-year growth. We have our losses on, of course, sales growth, improved product mix, fixed cost reduction, and tighter inventory management. So literally... Improvements in every dot, 51% OP, 49% OP operating profit, of course, net income of 53%. Uh, uh, normally, Sharp announces their earnings the day before we do, um, so everybody has a chance to see those. Uh, they announce the same, at the same time as, as us. So just so you know, um, we've got sales up 6% year on year and a halving of our operating losses. Um, Sharp in its display business had sales down 26-27% and no improvement um, on the operating side. So it, it does d describe uh, a quarter where we did um, relatively uh, well relative to one of our key peers. And the operating uh, environment continues to be challenging. We've got a lot of work to do. we we'll are continue to do it. Um, we are going to drive and are driving a radical transformation of profitability. Look, we have our operating losses year on year. That's super important for us to get to where we need to be. We're, and we expect to be EBITDA positive in the second half of this year. There's huge demand for ELEAP. Uh, we're working with the WUHU government on uh, launching a large-scale EEP fab, and that's, that's just going fine. Turning to the next page, um, one of the key deliverables we have is to deliver global number one tech, meaning technology no one else has. And if that sounds hard, um, I, I have to tell you, well, it is hard. Um, and, but it is a lot easier path to profitability than having technology where three or four or five very strong Asian competitors have equivalent capabilities. This is absolutely fundamental to delivering huge value for not only our customers, for our shareholders, and like ELEAP, which is a JDI technology which we invented and is going, it's the first in the world, an extraordinary improvement over current OLED technology. We are delivering over and over and over out of our, um, our labs, and not just labs, but in bringing into mass production uh, new technology. So we announced last week the first automotive grade dual touch uh, two vision display. You, you literally take two displays. Uh, one display and you make it into two displays. It's really interesting tech. I'll talk about that. We have the world's highest resolution, ultra-high resolution VR running on glass, which is a low cost. You can deliver normally what used to take super expensive silicon um, to deliver the kind of performance we can deliver on glass. We, we are, we believe, well, I mean, it is a case. We're way ahead of everybody on being able to do high resolution on glass. We have um, uh, telecom technology that we're rolling out. I mean, JDI really wants to go beyond displays. <laughs> displays is a tough market. I mean, the great thing about displays is they're fundamental and foundational for modern life, and there's also a bunch of, of competition out there. So going outside of displays into new areas is important to us. So we've got some technology that's deeply relevant in communications. We developed Zincia, a brand new sense of, uh, a set of sensor technologies that is really, really interesting. I'll touch on this later in the presentation. And finally, something that's important that's happening is there is a reconfiguration of supply chains that's going on. It means Japan has become far more important as a strategic manufacturing base, and JDI is also. So we've got a surge in 
you know, friendshoring, in other words, moving kind of your um, supply chains to allies that's going on um, that is uh, being driven by JDR customers. So really four messages here. One, eLeap is on track and will be tra absolutely transformational, not only for the industry and our customers, for her JDI. Two, we're hitting the numbers we need to, a huge improvement year on year uh, on, on the operating side, uh, putting us on track to, to get to EBITDA profitable in the second half of the year. Three, we're delivering on brand new technologies that no one else can do that will create powerful value for our, for our customers and also for our shareholders. And four, there's something very big going on in geopolitically and restructuring the supply chains, and we're a big beneficiary of that. I will now turn over to Hiko before I come back for some more details. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Hiko Sakaguchi, and I'll be speaking to the earnings results for the first quarter of the fiscal year ending March 2025. And so with that, I'm going to jump to slide 11. Um, so for the first quarter, um, sales came in at 55.9 billion yen. That's a 6% increase um, year on year versus the first quarter of last year where we reported 53 billion yen. I'll talk a little bit uh, more in detail about you know, the composition of sales on the next slide. But for now, just please understand that you know, we typically categorize our revenue into you know, you know, core business revenue and non-core business revenue. And as you can see, um, our core business revenue is strongly up 11% um, you know, versus the previous quarter, I'm sorry, versus a quarter, uh, first quarter of fiscal 2023, uh, finishing in at 50 billion yen. And our non-core business, which is effectively our LCD smartphone business, is down 27% versus the first quarter of last year, only because we are strategically shrinking that business towards, you know, towards exiting that business. If you look at the profit lines, EBITDA came in at six billion uh, at a six billion loss, and operating profit came in at a seven billion loss. So we're still um, in negative territory. But you know, as Scott mentioned earlier, we've effectively halved losses versus the first quarter of last year. In addition to um, the top line growth helping uh, with that, uh, you know, w with the improvement in our profitability. We've also radically improved our product mix, and that's really um, a result of us restructuring our product portfolio out of our non-core business and into our core businesses, which of course enjoy higher profitability overall. We've also continued to relentlessly cut on fixed costs where we can, and we've also really you know, been a lot tighter in terms of our uh, inventory control. And all those together is what has enabled us to have our losses versus the first quarter of last year. And same thing with the bottom line. In addition to everything I mentioned earlier, net income came in at, 6 .5, at a 6.5 um, billion yen loss. Um, in addition to all of the factors I mentioned for the operating loss line, we also um, reported an extraordinary gain of 1.7 billion yen from the sale of our Higashiura, our former Higashiura fab that we completed. The sale was completed on April 1st of this year. Um, now diving a little bit deeper into the breakdown of our sales. Uh, the upper half shows our core businesses and the lower half are non-core businesses. As you see, the core businesses are comprised of our automotive business and the smartwatch and VR business. Um, automotive was up very strongly, 16% um, versus the previous first quarter. The, you know, a little bit of a ta uh, FX tailwind there, but uh, more importantly, we saw very strong customer demand, including um, demand on some of our new products, and, and we were successfully able to capture that demand. So that's really what contributed to that 16% increase in automotive. Um, same thing with smartwatch and VR. We saw very strong demand for um, our OLED product lineup. Uh, VR was a little bit weak, um, but the strength in our OLED more than offset um, the weakness in our, in our VR top line. So all, overall, um, an 11% year-on-year gain in terms of, uh, of our revenue for our core businesses. And as, as I mentioned earlier, our, our non-core businesses are primarily our, our LCD smartphone business. You know, have we been mentioning... Um, over the past year, year and a half, we are strategically shrinking this business as we transform our portfolio. So as expected, you know, our, our revenues in this particular product line is down uh, versus the first quarter of last year. The, this slide here shows the change in operating profit 
from the first quarter of last year to the first quarter of this year. Uh, as we've been mentioning several times, we've halved our operating losses from roughly 14 billion to 7 billion this year. Um, a little bit of a tail, uh, FX tailwind there, as you see uh, on the left hand side, on the far right hand side, you see um, the effect of the fall off of the inventory valuation losses that were re reported first quarter of last year. But probably most importantly is that is that bar in the middle there, that 1.8 um, billion yen gain from the mix improvements. And that's everything I mentioned earlier in terms of how we are transforming our business portfolio out of non-core businesses into more profitable core businesses. And that's starting to really show effect there with that, that middle bar right there. Uh, this slide here shows uh, the change in operating profit from the fourth quarter of last year into the first quarter of this year. As you see, it's slightly down. This is all seasonality. I think, if, as you, you may already know, uh, first quarter tends to be the weakest quarter uh, of all four quarters for JDI. The, this year is no exception, so what you see here is effectively seasonality. Um, that's it for the first quarter earnings results. I'll talk just a little bit about our, um, our guidance, our forecast for the current year. That's ending March 2025. This slide is no different from the slide that we presented, we presented this past May, um, which is to say that our forecast remains the same. Uh, we are still looking to deliver $221 billion of, of top-line revenue, um, an 11, you know, billion, roughly an $11.7 billion loss at the EBITDA line and an $8.2 billion loss at the operating profit line. All of this you know, is on the back of the strategy that I've been mentioning several times. We are radically trying to improve the profitability of our business portfolio, uh, shifting out of non-core into core businesses. Um, and we're, we're, we're striving still at this point to, to hit EBITDA profitability uh, in the second half of this year. So nothing has changed on this slide. Uh, and as well as this slide here. So this is, again, uh, we, this is a reuse of a slide from our presentation this past May. This shows the change in operating profit going uh, from the first half of this year into the second half of the same year as well. And then what we, as we explained in May, what we're expecting to see is an accelerated sort of improvement in our operating uh, loss as we move into the second half of the year. It's just a manifestation as we continue to transform our business port portfolio towards stronger profitability. We're also looking to um, monetize where we can um, some of the licensing from our, our new technology such as eLeap and HMO. So we're all striving towards that. That's what you see in that middle box right there uh, called mix. It's a combination of just a stronger business portfolio uh, as well as some licensing business there. So again, no change to this slide. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it right back to Scott. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go through um, the business and meta growth 2026 update. This is 30 plus slides. Uh, I don't intend to go through every single one. Uh, and yet it feels like we should kind of remind you of what we're up to, um, what, why, why we're doing what we're doing, what the kind of core business strategy is. So, so please allow me uh, to, 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 to address that for all of you. I mean, I, th I think the core uh, of, of our growth strategy, which we announced uh, two years ago, is look, this is a radical transformation of JDI. Um, we, we, we expect of ourselves and our customers tell us that we're capable of this and so that we need to deliver uh, as a global number one technology leadership. So that, that's what we're doing. We use the word meta to describe, you know, big in size. We could have called it mega. We could have called it giga. Um, but the, the goal is not to do something small, to do something very, very big on a scale that is meaningful. And that reflects a fact that displays our foundational technology for modern society. I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, the AI revolution is real, uh, and it uses compute in, in a very powerful way. And guess what? The compute shows up in, in, in our lives via displays. And you, displays continue to be not only ubiquitous and growing, we're in a technology area that's deeply important. Um, for customer and social value, and we can improve people's lives, and we're going to. Three key pillars of the strategy. One, global number one technology leadership. Uh, I touched on, uh, on this a little bit earlier. You know, it's hard to be number one, but it's even harder to deliver a profitability on, on by being number two, number three, or being tied for, 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 for kind of with three other firms. So it is fundamental to us that we deliver a technology that no one else is capable of, and we are doing that. Two, um, I mean, the market-leading tech part is, reflects the global number one. 
We need the growth to be transformational. It is not interesting for us to do something small. The good news is that we can do something very, very large at scale um, with technology that other people don't have and deliver a significant value for not only our customers, but our shareholders. Three, climate change is real. Environmental damage that is, that is occurring you know, across the globe is real. We need to be green. We need to be sustainable. We are committed to, to, to being so. I touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, global number one technology, um, it's certainly something we're doing with eLeap, with our transformational next generation OLED, but it's across the board. So as examples, um, we have, and this technology is fantastic. I, ho I hope you join uh, me in, in, in absolutely loving tech and this ability to move the world forward and, and it's magical. So we've developed very high precision uh, sensor interface, which we're called, we're branding as Insia, that goes through all sorts of, of, of materials. So you can just turn anything into a sensor and the touch controls. So we're coming to market with this. Uh, every customer we've shown it to you, and if, you, if there's a customer on the call, we, we welcome uh, inbound from you because we will, we, will, we will show you all the different demos we have for it. This is really interesting uh, technology. It is powerful. It's coming to market um, uh, uh, very, very soon. Uh, we have, as another example, we are the world's best at ultra high resolution VR. I mentioned this earlier, um, and you probably know this, but the issue with with VR is you're using, you know, the the the, um, uh, the displays are very close to your eyes. You're using kind of um, a lenses in order to kind of magnify them to get the full the immersion effect. Typically, it's a 7x lens or a 10x lens, which means that. If it's 10x lens, it means you're cutting the actual, uh, you know, PPI, the, the resolution experienced by the user by 10 times. So it doesn't feel like it's 120,200 PPI. It feels like 120. So it is a voracious demand for high PPI, for high resolution, and it needs to be cost effective. And the problem with silicon is it's very, very expensive. So JDI is pioneering the ability, and it is truly unmatched, to deliver super high-end resolution in a very low-cost glass substrate. Again, coming to you soon. We have, this is also like magic. It's really fantastic. Um, we have developed very high-performance, um, what we call 2VD, two two-vision displays. You take a single monitor and you run totally different content on it. So, for example, this is an example of an auto case. The driver is looking at whatever the driver is looking at, GPS, uh, road information. The passenger is watching a movie or watching the Olympics. Um, this is not only for autos. It's for, it has, actually has dual touch too, so you can both be on touching the screen at the same time. Two different people, the driver and the passenger in this case, the, 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 the touch does not interfere with each other. It is literally taking a single display and making it into two displays. It is not only for auto applications. You can, you can do it vertically. You can do it horizontally. This, you, you, can, you can have two people sharing the same laptop or tablet, kind of in, having completely different functionality, real time. You can switch to, let's share it together. It is enormously powerful tech. It's a way of taking, and the reason why it's very powerful for autos is because as displays um, proliferate in autos, for example, passenger displays. So you want to give the passenger display. The problem is if passengers want to have a big display and it interferes with the airbag. And so you've got very constrained space. This is a technology that we had kind of 10 years ago and we had a competitor that was also involved in it. The technology was, um, to use a technical word, crap. Um, the, the visual experience, the image quality was terrible. There was no dual touch. We've solved for both of those problems. We're the world's first doing that. This, again, this technology come to you very soon. It's coming to you on autos and it's come to you in, across a range of applications um, that we think will be very powerful. We have deployed our, our, um, our world-class expertise in liquid crystals to generate advanced um, tele, 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 telecommunication commitment, excuse me. I'm, I'm, I'm notionally a native speaker in English, so hopefully I can, I can get through this call, uh, this, this web presentation. Uh, and so there's, there's things we're working on with big uh, telecom operators to allow them to do more in 5G, which has some, some challenges in, in, in creating the transmission and, and co communication coverage that, that users need. Um, so that would be four examples of things that we're doing in terms of uh, world-class technology. Again, we are continuing to take out costs and to take out assets. The problem with the display business historically has been it combines asset heaviness with, with low profitability. That doesn't work. So we're taking out both assets and increasing our profitability. 
Let me touch a little bit what's going on geopolitically. Um, and I think probably the next slide is, is really the important one. Um, and I touched upon this earlier. There is a reconfiguration of supply chains going on. Um, it's happening. It's happening most prominently in the U.S. auto industry. It's expanding um, to European autos. It is, of course, going on also in uh, U.S. and, and European um, consumer companies. You know, geopolitical risks are rising. There is a need to figure out how to deliver customer value in a more diversified way. China is a fantastic way, place to produce, and if only all you do is produce in China, then that can possibly create some risk for you as a company. So um, Japan is very, very good at high-end manufacturing. JDI is very good at high-end manufacturing. There has been a surge in activity. Um, you know, I think we probably we're guessing a little bit as to why this is the case, uh, that we're seeing so much more literally over the last four, four months, certainly in the United States in particular, perhaps it's linked to the U.S. election where there is activity on the part of both parties to increase tariffs in a very significant way with respect to China. But this is possibly a game changer for us, uh, game, a game changer for us. It's, this is a major shift in production activity, which we are welcome and ready for. Um, so we'll see how far we can run forward with this. One of the ironies is that JDI has switched over to OLED, um, and as we should, OLED is taking over uh, the world. Um, but it's interesting that there is, in a way, is arguably a bigger shortage of, for example, non-China LCD capacity than there is of non-China OLED capacity. So this is directly impacting our ability to create a, a step change of profitability from our from what we thought was more of a commodity LCD business, maybe coming back uh, in a big way. We're working on EVIP. Um, this is, I, I won't go, I think I've talked about this over and over and over. I'm hopeful that many of you are aware of what ELEAP is. Uh, it stands for Environment Positive Lithography Massless Deposition, Extreme long, long Life, Low Power, High Luminance, Any Shape Patterning. Um, I mean, the, the key is lithography. We are taking uh, what has classically been a kind of a deposition process, which uses huge fine, what called fine metal mass, FMM, and substituting semi-technology -techn lithography, and it's very, very powerful. Um, it, it, it is our core hypothesis that OLED is the winning display technology and ADIP is the winning OLED technology. Uh, OLED is fantastic. Uh, I, won't, I won't go in, in great length. I think you all know this, but it's better. Um, it, it offers... Uh, a series of characteristics that are super, super powerful. This is why OLED is taking share every single year. The world display technology is moving to OLED. This would be an example of it. I, I promise you I not, I'm not going to talk about every slide, so I won't. Um, we believe that OLED has significant advantages over, uh, over both micro LED and micro OLED, other competing technologies, and therefore it wins. The, the upside opportunity in terms of what the growth market um, uptake looks like is very, very big. Smartphones have already moved over 50% OLED. We think that these other um, market segments also go there. So a big um, opportunity. And there are some challenges with OLED, specifically short lifetime and high production cost. Elip solves for both. Some sense of how that works is on this page. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side, we've got conventional uh, OLED with only 20%. Uh, aperture ratio, meaning kind of 72% of the space on the display is actually black. And that's because these huge pa um, metal masks don't have enough tolerances to place pixels next to each other, because otherwise you have red and green and blue on top of each other, and you have terrible display quality. So because we switched to a semiconductor process of lithography, we don't have the metal mass limitations, and we can stick pixels really close to each other, that either delivers higher brightness or much higher pixel count, so we have the ability to break through with very high resolution OLED, for example, for the VR space in a way that is not possible with conventional OLED. That also generates a long lifetime. You can see how much better our lifetime is in conventional OLED. That's directly related to the fact that we have less black space and more um, pixel space because the problem with running, again, on the left-hand side of the page, running uh, conventional OLED is you have to put a ton of current through um, this black space in order to try to kind of create more brightness in the small brightness area. Because we, we, we increase the brightness area by two times, you can run less current and you don't burn out your organic pixels. So that's why EDIP has 
better lifetime and higher brightness. We also are cheaper to produce. So you get rid of all these costs that are related to fine metal mass. We can cut all the production costs by 30%. This is why eLeap is a game changer. It's better and it's cheaper at the same time. It is more environmental. You don't need all this chemicals. Um, so it's better for water in terms of trying to wash these fine, fine metal mass. You don't have to move around huge metal mass. Um, the, literally the amount of uh, CO2 emission um, in our process is only half that of conventional oil. And this is better technology across the board. Done a bunch of work on it. We're improving really fast. I'll run forward. As you know, we announced uh, the world's highest um, brightness, a single stack OLED recently, 1,600 nits on conventional, relative to conventional OLED, which is typically running at 400. Uh, we won the Display Device Innovation Gold Award at DIC, so the major Chinese uh, display conference. Um, I think it was actually it was two months ago. Um, so just very, very recently, we run forward. Three months ago, we showed our current production yield for ELEAP at 60%, above 60%. It's now above 70%. We are on track. We're going to go into mass production in the end of December. Uh, I'm sorry, in December of this year. So the end of this year. And we think we complete the third display revolution. A long time ago, um, cathode ray tubes were amazing. They brought moving pictures into the home. And then they were huge and bulky and massive. They were replaced by LCD. LCD has all these challenges. All it is kind of as replacing LCD, we think we complete the revolution by bringing ELEAP uh, to bear on behalf of consumers everywhere. It's a game changer. It's a massive market. We expect to be an undis uh, undisputed global OLED leader. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Um, and happy to take any questions or comments from anybody. Yes, uh, moving on to a Q&A session. If you have any questions, kindly click the raise hand bu button or feel free to send them through the chat. It appears there are no questions at this, at this time, so we'll conclude today's, uh, today's briefing. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening. We run forward. Take care.